Okay, welcome to the fifth online Spintronics seminar. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this is Xin Fan from University of Denver. I hope you are all doing well. Today, we're thrilled to have Professor Feng Yuan Yang as our speaker. Uh, Dr. Yang received his PhD from Johns Hopkins in 2001. He then worked at the Merced Center at Johns Hopkins as a research scientist for two years before joining Ohio State University, where he is now a full professor in the Department of Physics. He's also the director of Center for Exploration of Novel Complex Materials at OSU. His main research interest is in complex oxide epitaxial films for magnetoelectronic and uh, spin transport applications. So without further ado, uh, Professor Yang, please go ahead. All right, <clears throat> thank you, Xin, and thanks uh, Kirill for organizing this online series. Uh, I truly enjoyed the first four uh, seminar talks so today I'm going to uh, uh, present uh, our recent results in the topological Hall effect in uh, metal uh, magnetic garnet bilayer systems. And this work uh, was uh, done possible by the people showing right here. Let me show my um, pointer. So mostly uh, this was led by Aidan Lee and uh, Adam Ahmed and I uh, have collaboration with uh, quite several groups uh, at Ohio State University. And this work was primarily supported by DARPA and also uh, with partial support from the OSU MERSEC. So uh, here's an outline of this talk. Uh, first, I'll give a brief introduction to magnetic skirmions and topological Hall effect. And then I show the, our growth of uh, the uh, magnetic garnet uh, epitaxial films using off-axis sputtering in how we characterize their uh, structural and magnetic properties uh, using various techniques. Uh, and then the main result is in the Hall detection of uh, this uh, topological Hall effect, primarily in the uh, metal uh, magnetic garnet bilayers. First is gonna be platinum um, thelium iron garnet thin films. <clears throat> and then uh, I'll show, uh, we put uh, various kinds of uh, metals and, and bilayers on thelium iron garnet to show that uh, the uh, give some insight about the mechanism of the spin hall topological hall effect and where the interfacial DMI uh, may come from, and then I'll summarize. So magnetic skirmions uh, arises from uh, arise from the competition between the exchange direction, uh, given in this first first term that favors collinear alignment of adjacent spins and the jelosinski morio interaction, which favors orthogonal alignment of the neighboring spins. And the competition of this, when they are of comparable magnitude, uh, you can induce this chiral spin structure as uh, illustrated in this uh, diagram. So if we pass a current, electrical current, through uh, materials with magnetic skirmions, uh, the electrons uh, will experience uh, emergent electromagnetic field, which is going to deflect it to generate a, a transverse Hall signal called a uh, topological Hall effect. Meanwhile, uh, it is possible that skirmions, due to the uh, reaction force, uh, that can be moved to the along the transverse direction as well. That is called the skirmion Hall effect. Both uh, aspects of these Hall effects have been observed experimentally. So the topological Hall effect was first reported in uh, bulk crystals of manganese uh, silicide, as shown in this top left uh, corner, uh, in 2009. And later on, it was reported in epitaxial films of the B20 materials, in this case, it's iron germanium. And later on, more recently, uh, this topological Hall effect has been seen in a variety of materials, uh, such as the, the strontium ruthenate based uh, oxide thin layers and induced by this interfacial um, DMI. So it's noticed that uh, all those materials on these slides, they are all based on conducting ferromagnetic materials. Uh, for insulators, it is intrinsically difficult because it, insulators do not allow the passing of electrical current. So we, uh, we have been studying uh, magnetic garnet films for quite several years, um, and we use uh, the off-axis sputtering to grow various kinds of the magnetic garnet epitaxial films. 
And this is uh, the picture of my uh, equipment uh, in my lab. And this is uh, the sputtering plasma. This diagram shows the, the unicell of uh, the garnets, which has 160 atoms in there. Uh, the, uh, the, it has the octahedral and tetrahedral environments surrounding, let's say, iron, which provide them the magnetic moment. And then uh, the, uh, the rarest elements, such as yttrium or thelium, are in this interstitial uh, sites. So the, the, di the pictures on the right, uh, the figures on the right shows the uh, X-ray diffraction characterization of this thelium iron garnet films. The top one is for uh, it's an XRD theta two theta scan for a 35 nanometer thelium iron garnet film or TIG we call it. So this is uh, has two scans. The blue one is on the GGG substrate, which has a lattice constant of 12.382 angstrom or so, and the red one is on the substitute GGG, which has a lattice larger lattice constant. Uh, in this case, we use 12.48 angstrom. Uh, SGDG. Because of different, that there are different lattice constants, they're going to exert different kind of epitaxial strains on the thelium iron garnet. So the thelium iron garnet for the film on uh, the GGG has the 444 peak right here. And then the, uh, the thelium iron garnet 444 peak on the SGGG is right here. Clearly, they are very different because the different strain. And so later on, I'm going to show the red one on SGG will have an outer plane magnet anisotropy, while the, the one on GGG has in-plane anisotropy. The bottom two plots shows the, uh, um, the X-ray rocking curve, which measures the uniformity of the single crystal ordering. You can see both for the, for the take film on GGG and on SGGG, their full width at a half maximum is about 0 0.005 or 6 degrees. That is at the resolution limit of our X-ray diffractometer. And this is, uh, uh, shows the very high crystalline uniformity of the thelium iron, iron garnet films. These oscillations, these wiggles, uh, we ca is called Lowy oscillations. And they, they, the more you see them, the, which means the more uniform, more uh, highly ordered they are. So, now let's move on to the uh, scanning transmission electron microscopy imaging of these, uh, these uh, magnetic garnet films. On the left is a platinum on five nanometer thelium iron garnet on SGGG. So on the top one, you see there's a, the thelium iron garnet is a little lighter than the SGGG uh, because it is a little bit heavier on average than the uh, gadolinium containing SGGG and platinum because it's the heaviest, so it's very bright. If we zoom in, we can see the clear garnet ordering from the bottom interface to the top. So that shows, the, as far as from the TEM goes, uh, that the films is uniformly uh, ordered in the garnet lattice. The one on the right shows uh, a thinner thelium iron, iron garnet film. This one, uh, as we design as 1.85 nanometer. It doesn't mean that we can control that to the 0.01 nanometer precision, but this is roughly about 1.85 nanometer thickness. And the one on the right of this uh, plot is the uh, EDAX mapping of different elements. So this is a thelium, this uh, pink red uh, region, and platinum on the top and gallium at the bottom. That shows that uh, the clearly uh, the the, the uh, distribution of these elements in this uh, these layers. So the bottom one is a uh, is a top view. Basically, we polish the the, the substrate down to a very uh, thin wedge, and we view from the top. And this clear this include both the thelium iron garnet and also the SGGG substrate. So you can see this nice hexagonal or snowflake pattern. And actually, we can identify where the atoms are. Let's say this dot, this is like a, a triplet of the uh, rare earth element, either thelium or gadolinium. And then these lighter ones, and even the inner ones, there are some of the uh, iron or gallium. So this shows this nice uh, gar uh, garnet ordering from the both the cross-sectional and also the top view. 
But now I'm going to show some of the, uh, the other uh, basic characterizations, such as the magnetization. So the top figure on the left is uh, a magnetic hysteresis loop for a 5 nanometer film MR and garnet on SGGG. As I mentioned uh, earlier, this has uh, outer plane anisotropy. So this is with an outer plane uh, magnetic field. We can see that the, the hysteresis loop is rather sharp, and the transition happened typically within 0 0.1 Gauss with a coercivity of, in this case, 1.3 Gauss. So this is very, uh, indicate this, this film uh, is very soft magnetically, which can be uh, uh, desired for, let's say, if we want to do magnet switching electrically, for example, or later on, uh, we use that to nucleate uh, magnetic skirmions. And we also measure the uh, magnetization versus temperature plot as shown on the bottom. So this one, if we extrapolate this with the baseline, we get a Curie temperature of 508 Kelvin. So right, uh, uh, just slightly above 500 Kelvin. So this is uh, comparable to some of the other garnets like YIG. So it's very pretty high TC. And so it's good for room temperature applications. So on the right, it shows this angular dependent ferromagnetic resonance. So angular dependent ferromagnetic resonance is a pretty accurate technique to measure the magnetic anisotropy, right? And also the magnetic resonance, the line width, et cetera. So the, the top and the bottom shows the, uh, it's actually 1.85 nanometer, the only ion garnet uh, on SGGG on the top and also on GGG at the bottom. So if you, uh, if you study the magnetic film, you know, as you make it thinner and thinner, the, the would create so-called a, a size effect. So the TC is going to drop. So at a room temperature, this is still uh, ferromagnetic order. And, and then the order, the, the blue is the in-plane magnetic resonance. The red is the outer plane magnetic resonance absorption. So on the top, the, the outer plane is, um, at, happened at a lower field that indicate this is uh, out of plane magnetized, has an out of plane anisotropy, and this is um, the SGGG substrate. On the bottom, the, the in plane, out of plane uh, switched uh, their order. So the in plane is, uh, has happened at the lower field and indicate this film has in plane anisotropy. So on, on the bottom uh, right shows the, the, the plot of the, the resonance magnetic field, which we identify somewhere right here for the in plane spectrum. Uh, we plot it as a function of angle. So the, the, the one on GGG shows that the in-plane, sorry, the theta equals zero means out of plane, right? It's defined right here. That means this one is hard axis, this one is easy axis. Well, for the, one, the film on the SGGG, the left is lower, so that's easy axis. The one at 90 degree is hard axis. So this means uh, we have ferromagnet ordered uh, tick films at a thickness of about 1.85 nanometer. So then let, we move on to hall measurement. So basically we apply an outer plane field and then uh, we uh, pass current through the platinum. In this case, it's two nanometer platinum on five nanometer thelium iron garnet. So previously uh, our study about the, the YIG or the thelium iron garnet, the thinnest one we got, uh, we ever studied was four nanometer because we suspect that when you go thinner, the quality may, may suffer and the damping may go up. So we started with five nanometers. And then uh, we pat it into a hall bar structure, standard hall bar structure, and use the, uh, the, our PPMS uh, to measure this. So when we look at this hall data, we see this uh, clear, this is anomalous hall-like features, okay? This is, we believe is called a spin hall anomalous hall effect. So it is the platinum, in, in the platinum we have the spin hall effect, which is, going to be a, which is going to detect the magnetization state of the thulium iron garnet film, either when it's up or down, it'll give you a different diffraction of the electrons. And that's how we can detect this uh, anomalous hall like loop, right? So from the 10 Kelvin, right, up to 300 Kelvin, Playing a normal hall feature, so nothing special. Then we made an even thinner film. In this case, we made a three nanometer thulium iron garnet, still capped with a two nanometer platinum. 
so at a lower temperature, they all look pretty uh, standard, the anomalous hall. But then when we get to above 350 Kelvin, approaching 400 Kelvin, we saw this, uh, this opening, and that is, we believe is the drift of the sample at a higher temperature. And then we saw this hint of this peak features, okay? At the time, we were not sure, but we were, we were trying to investigate more. But the 400 Kelvin is the upper limit of our PPMS. So clearly, we either need uh, a thinner thelium iron garnet film or a higher temperature to measure Hall effect. So we built, a, um, uh, we made a home-built magnetic transport system using the electromagnet in our uh, VSM system. And that will allow us to get to above 400 Kelvin, in this case, 465 Kelvin, that's the maximum we got. And we have a maximum field of 1.6 Tesla. So now we test this three nanometer thelium iron garnet film capped with platinum. We saw that above 400 Kelvin, we see this pronounced peak, rather sharp peak appear at a relatively low field, okay? And then eventually it disappeared at uh, above uh, 465 Kelvin or so. So now, we, make, we made a thinner film, this time it's two nanometer. We still observe this peak feature, but the, re, the temperature region for this peak feature is lower. So it started around 300 Kelvin and disappear at 400 Kelvin. Clearly this has a very sensitive dependence on the thickness of the thelium iron garnet film. So now we continue to push lower the thickness and this is the 1.85 nanometer uh, thelium and garnet cap is platinum. The peak feature get even, even lower. So it's from 265 to just over 300 Kelvin. So this just nicely span the room temperature. And then we push to 1.5 nanometer and the peak feature is still observed and, but it's around 220 to 240 Kelvin. So we believe this is the topological Hall effect. And, but how do we extract the topological Hall resistivity. So normally, the Hall signal we measure includes three contributions. The first one is the ordinary uh, Hall effect, which is uh, proportional to the field, simply due to the platinum layer. The second term is the anomalous Hall effect, which in principle, principle should follow the magnetization of the ferromagnet. And this one we believe is, can, we can detect that because we have platinum uh, on thelium iron garnet. And the third term is the topological Hall term. So how do we extract this? Uh, so here we show this um, um, 1.85 thelium iron garnet film capped with platinum. So this is the one shown early from 265 Kelvin to 365. The ordinary Hall effect, we can simply extract, uh, subtract that using the linear portion of the Hall loop at a high field region, which uh, largely has been subtracted. Uh, but how do we subtract the, the anomalous Hall contribution? In principle, we can put into uh, either VSM or squid magnetometer to measure the magnetization hysteresis loop. But for 1.85 nanometer thelium iron garnet with very small saturation magnetization, that is just not practical. So we use uh, a fit through this hyperbolic tangent function and then to kind of this, bl this black curve to uh, simulate the, uh, the magnetization of anomalous Hall uh, loop. And that's, we got this, uh, this anomalous Hall contribution. If you subtract this green, the experimental data points from this, uh, this uh, black curve, we get this topological Hall contribution, right? It has this uh, rising up, let's so see, lower the, the field and then reverse the opposite direction and back to uh, zero. So it happens at about one kilogauss field range with the maximum about four nano ohm centimeter. So then we uh, uh, did the same uh, analysis for uh, various thicknesses of the uh, thelium iron garnet films and at various temperatures. And this is the, the we call the phase, space, phase diagram for various thicknesses of the thelium iron garnet uh, in the phase space of magnetic field, the vertical axis, and temperature, which is the horizontal axis. 
So let's start from the, the, the thickest, the five nanometer, which we did not observe any topological signals up to the maximum temperature uh, allowed by our apparatus of 465 Kelvin. And then when we get down to three nanometer thermal iron garnet, we see this pretty uh, clear feature of this topological hall signal, I mean, which start around 400 Kelvin and uh, extend beyond the maximum temperature uh, of our system. And then as we keep lowering that to two nanometer, 1.85 and 1.5 nanometers, this topological hall effect region continuously move downward in terms of the temperature while their field region are more or less uh, the same. So now let's come back to the um, original uh, the XRD characterization. So far I've been uh, discussed are all on the, for the thelium iron garnet films on SGDG substrate. All of them have uh, perpendicular magnetic NSRGB. Uh, what about the in-plane NSRGB that we grow on GGG substrate? So this plot on the left shows the, the Hall signal for platinum on thelium iron garnet film, two nanometer, on GGG with in-plane NSRGB. We see that the similar feature of this topological Hall peaks all, uh, still exist. And if we plot this phase diagram for the two nanometer right here, and compare that with the same bilayer on SGG with out of NSRGB, they are qual qualitatively the same except that the magnitude of the topological hall signal is a little bit lower. Okay? That means that the topological hall effect is not very sensitive to whether the film has either outgoing anisotropy or in-plane anisotropy. So now let's see if we can uh, extract the, uh, just some discussion about various hall contributions to the uh, uh, signals we observed in the platinum thulium iron garnet bilayers. So this equation include the five possible contributions uh, for this material system. Uh, of course, the first one is the topological, sorry, the ordinary Hall effect, which is linearly proportional to the applied magnetic field. The next term, next two terms are both anomalous Hall contribution, but uh, from <laughs> different origins. The first one possibly from the platinum layer in order for that to appear we need magnetic proximity effect, which has been um, extensively studied in platinum on various magnetic uh, materials. The third term here is the, what, what we call the spin hall, anomalous hall effect. To make that happen, so the, basically the platinum has a large spin hall angle. So when you pass a current through, it's gonna generate spin polarized current, uh, sorry, spin polarized uh, carriers at the interface uh, with the thelium ion garnet. And then it's going to exert a spin orbit torque with the thelium ion garnet magnetization. And that interaction due to the, you can link that to the so-called spin hall magnetic resistance phenomena. And that can actually give you a, a hall like feature. That's, that's how you can detect the magnetization switching in the thelium ion garnet. The next two terms are the topological hall signals. And likewise, we also divide into two possible origins. The first one is due to the magnetic proximity effect, which means the spin textures in the thelium iron garnet is going to have an imprint in the magnetized moment in platinum, which also is chiral. So that can give you possibly the topological hall effect. The last term is what do we call the spin hall topological hall, which is like what we, I just discussed in the spin hall anomalous hall which rely on the spin hall effect in platinum, which generate the spin accumulation at the interface with thelium iron garnet. And that's going to probe the spin texture in the thelium iron garnet. It doesn't require platinum to be magnetized. So the two anomalous hall terms would follow the magnetization while the two uh, topological hall terms, uh, how do we distinguish? Uh, which one is, is present or both uh, are present in this bilayer system. So now let's look at the, uh, uh, we change various kinds of metals on thelium iron garnet and see how, see how that, that uh, affect the presence or absence of the, um, 
uh, topological Hall effect. This, fig uh, this figure shows tantalum, two, uh, sorry, tungsten, two nanometer tungsten on thulium iron garnet, two nanometer. We can see that the topological Hall peak uh, emerges between 270 and up to 340 or so Kelvin. So it's still there. Now we have those three terms and similar to the platinum on thulium iron garnet. So now we replace tungsten with tantalum. So tantalum, tantalum and tungsten are both, have both been used heavily in the spin hole physics. And they both have uh, large spin hole angles. So now if you put a three nanometer tantalum on thulium iron garnet, we don't see the peak feature. We only see these anomalous hall-like features. Okay, so that is a little puzzling for us. So, so no topological hall feature, but we do have the ordinary hall and anomalous hall feature. Then we put two nanometer of gold on two nanometer helium iron garnet. We see straight lines at temperatures between 200 Kelvin and 400 Kelvin. So there's no anomalous hall feature, no topological hall feature only the ordinary Hall effect. So how do we interpret this, uh, the very different behaviors of these three heavy metals, 5D metals? So now we make a trilayer. So still on the thulium iron garnet two nanometer film, we first put down a one nanometer gold, pretty thin gold layer. And then on top, we put a three nanometer platinum. We do the Hall measurement like we did before, and we see this topological Hall feature come out. So that is very interesting. I will discuss what the possible mechanism would be in this trilayer features. So there are three there are various kinds of reasons. One is whether this one nanometer gold, whether that's enough to separate platinum. Okay. So now let's uh, compare this with the platinum, which has similar feature with this trilayer, with gold that is very different. So how do we further understand what is going on in this trilayer system? So now let's replace gold with two other material. One is tit uh, titanium in the middle. You know, titanium is a 3D metal, supposedly it should have a small spin hole angle and a small spin orbit coupling. We see this uh, slanted S-shaped curve, and that is uh, indication of the anomalous Hall effect, but there's no topological Hall peaks. And then if we put a tantalum uh, in the place of gold, we also see this kind of slanted as shape, anomalous Hall feature. There's no topological Hall effect. So um, that means the titanium or tantalum can completely isolate platinum from the thulium iron garnet. So what happens in this gold, platinum gold trilayer, this tabular Hall effect is due to the interfacial uh, interaction. It should be induced at the interface between gold and thulium iron garnet. So now if we plot these uh, four trilayer uh, structures, this uh, and one bilayer with platinum on thulium iron garnet, and then the tantalum, and then the platinum on gold, and platinum on titanium. So it shows that this one has nothing right, on the titanium spacer, but the one with gold actually is quite similar to the one, uh, the bilayer of platinum on thulium iron garnet, except that the, uh, the temperature region shifted slightly upward. Okay, so uh, how should we understand this? This is our understanding about what we observe right here. So when we have uh, for a platinum thulium iron garnet, uh, bilayer, that interface induces uh, a strong interfacial DMI, and that will lead to the emergence of topological uh, spin textures in thulium iron garnet. But uh, only when the, uh, when the, we believe the Curie temperature of the magnetic garnet film is, uh, is detectable. So for example, below three nanometer, we can detect it uh, up to the 400 some Kelvin, but above that, we can't. As we keep in decreasing the thickness of the thulium iron garnet, uh, we can uh, dramatically lower the temperature window where the topological Hall effect will emerge. 
And the, well, the role of the platinum is to detect the magnetization of the thelium iron garnet, okay, as it switches like a, a anomalous Hall effect. If the thelium iron garnet in there, there, is a top, uh, there are top, uh, spin textures, then platinum can also detect the spin textures via the topological Hall effect and through the interfacial spin orbit interactions. For tungsten on thelium iron garnet, it can also induce a strong interfacial DMI and spin textures. And tungsten itself, uh, as a heavy metal with strong spin orbit coupling, can also detect the magnetization and spin textures in the underlying thelium iron garnet. For tantalum on thelium iron garnet, clearly, obviously, it does not induce a strong interfacial DMI, so it cannot induce uh, topological spin textures. So we don't see uh, topological Hall effect, but the tantalum, tantalum can still generate, still has a, a large spin Hall effect, so you can still detect the magnetization of the thelium iron garnet, so you can still see the anomalous Hall effect. For the gold uh, thelium iron garnet interface, from the trilayer uh, result, we believe that this interface can still induce a large interfacial DMI and spin textures in the thelium iron garnet. But the gold, with its relatively small uh, spin hall effect, it cannot detect the magnetization or the spin textures uh, like the platinum or tungsten or tantalum can do. So it could be due to its relatively small spin hall effect or could be because it's a relatively long spin diffusion length. But then if you put the trilayers, platinum on one nanometer gold, on thelium iron garnet. We can get the benefit of both. So the gold thelium iron garnet interface gave us the large DMI and also the emergence of the spin texture, while platinum can generate a large spin Hall effect, which can detect the uh, magnetization and the spin texture through the one nanometer gold, which, uh, which we can consider as transparent to spins. And this also uh, rule out the uh, the magnetic proximity effect as the underlying mechanism for the uh, spin textures or the detection of the uh, anomalous Hall effect. So now if you compare that with the trilayer with one nanometer, one nanometer ti uh, titanium, the titanium thelium iron garnet interface uh, clearly uh, give us a small interfacial DMI, so there's no spin textures, but the platinum can still function as a spin generator and spin detector, which can also uh, uh, pass through the one element titanium and detect the magnetization so you can see the anomalous Hall effect. So this indicate at least for the topological Hall effect, we do need uh, this, the metal thulium iron garnet interface to provide the strong interfacial DMI to generate the uh, uh, spin textures. So uh, this is the second to last slide. So I wanted to give uh, our, our understanding about the mechanism for this proposed spin hall topological hall effect, which is quite different from, let's say, the conducting material like uh, iron germanium, uh, because this is a purely interfacial effect. So the first, the platinum as a heavy metal can generate spin accumulation at the interface between platinum and thulium iron garnet due to the spin Hall effect, and that is a well ex accepted uh, phenomenon. And then independently, that platinum thulium iron garnet interface can induce strong interfacial DMI, and that is essential for the appearance of spin textures. And that can only appear when the temperature and the magnetic field and the thickness range is optimal. It's a, need a, a, a kind of a sweet, sweet spot for the topological Hall effect to emerge. So now, the spin accumulation in the platinum at the interface with thelium iron garnet is going to exert a spin orbit torque, which is going to interact with the thelium iron garnet magnetization. And then, um, and that interaction is similar to the spin Hall magnetic resistance phenomena, which can lead to a transverse uh, Hall signal. So this three sub bullets give the explanation for the three contributions to the Hall signal, right? The first one is the ordinary Hall, which is 
plainly simple. Right? You only need a platinum to give you the ordinary Hall effect. And the, due to this interaction between the platinum spin, spin accumulation and the magnetization of the thelium iron garnet, when it's in ferromagnetic aligned state, the platinum spins can detect the thelium iron garnet magnetization leading to the anomalous Hall signal. When the thelium iron garnet thickness in the, in the uh, not too thick uh, range between 1.5 and 3 nanometers, the spin textures appear. So the platinum spins can interact with this chiral spin texture in the ferromagnet insulator. Uh, we, assume, we, we believe that it's going to follow the chiral spins and acquire a non-vanishing battery phase just like it's going through a conducting ferromagnet with magnetic skirmions. And that will lead to similarly an emergent uh, electromagnetic field, uh, which can lead to the appearance of the topological Hall effect. So to summarize, uh, we have uh, observed uh, through the Hall measurement, strong interfacial DMI in platinum, tungsten, and gold on thulium iron garnet. The platinum, tungsten, and tantalum can uh, behave like a uh, spin generator and spin detector. So to summarize, so we have uh, grown uh, high quality, and that is just about 1.2 uh, unicell thick. We detected topological Hall signal in platinum, thulium, and garnet bilayers, and which is very sensitive to the thickness of the thelium and garnet films. And we also observe topological Hall effect in tungsten and uh, on thelium iron garnet and platinum on gold spacer uh, on thelium iron garnet. And there's no topological Hall effect in tantalum and gold on thelium iron garnet, as well as the trilayer with titanium and tantalum um, one nanometer spacers. And we believe the interfacial DMI for the phenomena we observed comes from the metal uh, magnet insulator interface. And we believe the mechanism for this detection, uh, we term it a uh, spin hall, topological hall effect. Thank you very much. So I would like to answer questions. Uh Thank you, Professor Yang, for the very nice talk. I forgot to mention, so uh, this talk was also supposed to be the APS invited talk. Uh, let's send a round of virtual applause by clicking the reactions button at the bottom Zoom screen. All right, so this uh, seminar is open for questions. Uh, if you want to ask a question, please use the raise hand option if you're using a PC that's uh, by clicking the participants at the bottom of the screen and then click the raise hand on the popped up menu at the, at the right bottom corner, I believe. Uh, Professor uh, Wu, Min Zhong Wu, please go ahead. Uh, hi, for you, a uh, nice talk. Uh, this is uh, Min Zhong. Uh, Thank you, Ming John. Can you explain uh, again why the tantalum, um, tantalum right, cannot yes. give uh, interfacial DMI? That is also a surprise for us. So we, we, uh, we uh, assume that tantalum will behave very similarly to uh, ten, uh, tungsten, uh, but did not. So if you ask, so let's say, uh, I think a lot of studies show that tantalum has a uh, somewhat smaller spin hall angle than tungsten and even some study than platinum. But the somehow we it just, maybe there's some cutoff for the spin hall angle or, but also this interfacial DMI is not necessarily linearly proportional to the spin hall angle, but that is still a puzzle for us. Uh, but that's what we observe. We don't have a, a concrete answer for why Tantalum does not give us this topological Hall effect. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sebastian Diaz, you can ask the second question. Please go ahead. Uh -huh. 
Hi, um, quick question about uh, potentially imaging the actual spin textures. Would it be possible for these films to do Lorentz TM or any of those other techniques to see actually in real space what the textures look like? Well, of course, that's a great question. And we have been trying to image that with multiple techniques. Uh, the challenge would be the, uh, at room temperature, uh, the thickness of the thelium garnet is about 1.8, 1.9 um, nanometer. So the signal is very weak. Uh, but also, if you want to do Lorentz TEM, you would need to do that in a plan view. So it's a top view. So to, to, to get, and then you're going to have a, a, a large majority of the sample would be the substrate. So, but we have been trying those, but then there's also other techniques of, let's say MFM, or maybe the, some other uh, imaging techniques, ND for example. But, uh, okay, so here's the thing. Um, I think we have some preliminary data on imaging that we believe they are, from, they are the skirmions, but this happened right before the shutdown of this coronavirus. So we need to uh, triple confirm that. But uh, right now it sounds like very promising that we, we can image this. Thank you. Thanks. Dr. Shulei Zhang, please go ahead with your question. Uh, Shula, you have to unmute yourself. Got uh, Hi, Professor Young. Nice talk. Uh, this is Shule from uh, Case Western. A uh, quick question on the signs of the uh, topological Hall effect. So the signs of uh, uh, the topological Hall effect in uh, tungsten TIG and uh, platinum uh, gold TIG the same or are they opposite? Uh, they, they are all the same. So oh, let, let me, yeah, they are the same. Let me try, I think the, this topological Hall effect or the anomalous Hall effect, they are, uh, they have the similar origin as the uh, spin Hall magnetic resistance. I yeah. believe there's a square of the uh, spin Hall angle. I think yes. that, that's what I, well, yeah, I think that's, so that's why they all appear to be the same sign, yeah. Got you, thanks. Thank you. Is there any other question? Oh, actually, um, Kiro Belashenko has a question. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, very nice talk. Um, I have a question about the sign of the effect. So if I'm reading uh, the pictures correctly, uh, the topological Hall effect uh, changes sign when you insert gold between platinum and the insulator, and it doesn't change sign when you switch from platinum to tungsten. So for example, on slide um, 19, 19. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, so if you look at the color, uh, so at the bottom right, for example, so you look at platinum, you have magenta at the bottom and cyan at the top. When you insert gold, it's oh, it's oh, oh, okay, hold what? on. Sorry. What? That might be a mistake. Let me see. Okay, so the, the, the raw data is right here. So the raw data. So, okay, for example, here is, uh, here is the platinum on gold. So this is the Hall feature. And then this is the platinum on thelium on garnet. And that's the Hall feature. I think this, this is, uh, so these two should have the same polarity. So um, I think that's a, that's a mistake. It should be the other way. And what about tungsten compared to platinum? Tungsten and platinum, like, let's look at the raw data. So here is platinum, here's tungsten. They all have the same, if you call it chirality, uh, polarity. So, they, so basically as you go from the, the high, positive high field and it's come down here before the switch, it rises up, okay? And then come down. Mm -hmm. So all the double out hall signals we observe all behave like that. The, 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 the one panel in uh, slide 19 it's a mistake, I, we just flipped uh, the color. So if it depends on the spin hole effect, um, does it depend on the sign of the spin hole effect? Because we know well, it's uh, different than platinum or tungsten. Right, but as, as I just answered in the previous uh, question, I think there's, uh, there's a square of the spin hole angle ah, okay. in, in there. So, so it's kind of canceled it out, yeah. Okay. So all Thank the double hole signal we observe in this system, they all behave like this. Thank you.
Yeah, sorry about typo. Dr. Mark Staus, please go ahead with your question. Uh, so in, in this figure, uh, do you have any idea why the magnetization seems to switch over a much smaller field scale uh, for the uh, for the tungsten than it does for the tantalum? Oh, uh, so Mark, that, that we don't we don't know. Um, so if you if you look at can, can you see my cursor? I mean, yep. my pointer. Okay, so. So th this region is the topological host region. So the switching is rather, uh, I mean, sharper than uh, we would for the anomalous hot feature. But if you look at the uh, the the overall anomalous hall, uh, it's more similar to tantalum. So appear to me that uh, when it's in the skirmion region, which we believe is the case, the field region for switching is quite different from the what do we call the anomalous hall? So the anomalous hall for this tantalum, and also later on I showed in these tri-layers, they all happen with, let's say, five to 10 kilogauss in that field range. But in the topological hall signal, the peak is typically from 700 gauss to like a thousand. We, we don't know why, it just, there are two different phases, we believe. Uh, Dr. Peng Li, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Professor uh, Yang, for the excellent talk. So my thank question you. is about the topological Hall curves. So, for example, if we look at the one, the the uh, the left graph at three hundred and sixty k. Um, so yes. when we look at the traces, the so the so the forward traces and back traces, they overlap with each other very well. So, I uh, so for so my understanding. Oh, oh, oh. sorry. Uh, you're talking about, so actually this is just, uh, um, this is just one scan. It's, it, this one, all the curves I show is just from positive to negative. There's, there's no coming back. So this is not a straight, this is half of the loop. Oh, okay. So Sorry, yeah, yeah. That's why you appear just one line because it is one line. I see. But if we, but, but if we overlap the four, uh, the, all the traces, Will they overlap with each other perfectly, or there will be some okay. loops? So, so I, I don't have the the raw hall. We did when we do the did the experiment. We we did the the full loop, okay. And then the cur cursivity, if you call it, uh, within this temperature range, they are essentially zero, but not necessarily precisely zero. The reason I only show one loop because when we make the hall hall bar, uh, there's always contribution from the row x x. So we use this uh, approach we, uh, we uh, specify in our paper is that we call it anti-symmetrization, if I say that word correctly. So we, so we get rid of the asymmetric contribution because row access is even as a function of the field while the hall is odd. So we use that asymmetry to get rid of the row access contribution. And then, uh, so, so because we need to use both sides, so we, we only pick the, show the, the one uh, direction uh, half of the loop. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Axel Hoffman, please go ahead with your question. Hi, Feng Yang, nice, nice presentation. Thank you, hey Axel. I was wondering, did you, did you look into how important the alignment of the magnetic field is? Did you on purpose maybe uh, you know, uh, align the field slightly different? Could that affect? The, the, the main structures that you have when you go through the transition and all that? Excellent question. So actually we did uh, a, a certain period, of, during a period of time, we, we purposely vary the outer plane field angle. So we go 90 and then like 80, 70. So, so my, my recollection is over a quite broad angle, angular range. Like uh, I forgot it, whether it's 60 to 90 or even 40 to 90. These kind of features are still still very similar, but the actual field region is somewhat different. But the qualitatively, they all behave the same. So unless you really get very close to the implant field, then things become weird. But over a rather large uh, angular range uh, around the outer plane direction, they are qualitatively the same. 
All right, thanks. Thank you. Uh, YTM, please go ahead with your question. Uh, hi, this is Jon Kumile, Physical UB, one of the hosts of the event from APS. Uh, thank you for the great talk. Thank you. Uh, so I have this uh, remark. It, it, it seems like low-lying fruit that you can actually determine. Uh, it's very difficult, but you can determine. I'm looking at the plots here. The critical, uh, the curie temperature of the garnet from uh, just by using your whole effect curves is the sensor. You said platinum in sensing, essentially. Mm -hmm. So, and once you have that, the dependence of TC on thickness of the ferrite, that is, you can normalize all these beautiful temperature curves so that you can then compare between the different metals on top. That is, they'll be all, all normalized to the critical temperature of the same garnet and maybe some comparison can come to mind to uh, more abstract theorists also. I see. So uh, you're suggesting, for example, uh, but the question is where would we pick the, uh, the curie temperature? Maybe at the upper band of this colored um, region? Is that what you're suggesting? No, I, I'm just picking on what you suggested is possible, namely you can go to very low thicknesses and yeah. uh, in fact very few people on any material over many 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 years have been able to go to very low thicknesses uh, comparable to yours and you actually have more data points uh, raw data points so to say on this mm -hmm. dependence uh, than anybody in, may have for these ferrites for the garnets uh, and so from your I, I don't intend to do that myself, of course. I don't have the data uh, and uh, anyway. But the point is, I'm pretty sure you can deduce the, the curie temperature dependence on the thickness of the garnet. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. And once you have it, then for, for all, you, you can calibrate or, or scale, if you wish, uh, all the other metals you put on top of that for, mm -hmm. for the same measurements. And then there will be scaled curves and beautiful things may appear. I just don't know. I, I'm just thinking it's uh, like a could be a byproduct of what you're doing. Is all I'm saying. Okay, that's that's an excellent suggestion. So, uh, but uh, if you have some thoughts, can you uh, just send me an email? And I'll be very interested in discussing what we can get out of this analysis. I and hope I have some. But if you promise to send the paper to physical your B and not to materials. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let 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 let's have a discussion. Yeah. So, I'm kidding. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Yang Wang, please go ahead with your question. Uh, Professor Yang, uh, did you observe uh, topological horizon in other comments? Uh, yes. Uh, actually. Uh, well. So we also tried on uh, yttrium iron garnet. And actually we did observe uh, topological Hall effect. And because we, have, we cannot access our lab now, so I'm, we're working on a, on a manuscript on that paper. So uh, yes, uh, looks like this is a, a rather general phenomena. If you tailor the thickness, the, the, the um, the, the metal, the interface to a certain region, this would appear. So yeah, at least we know it uh, emerges from the yttrium iron garnet based uh, structures as well. Okay, thank you. Thanks. All right, is there any other question? Okay, if not, I want to thank Professor Young again for this very inspiring talk. And I want to thank everyone for participating